Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody will come in and we can begin. We had planned to begin with a talk by John Hanger. You might remember that he ran for uh, governor. And uh, we were very much impressed when we met him in Philadelphia uh, at Temple University by his position on mass incarceration. And he now has a very important position with the governor. In fact, he's his right-hand man. <clears throat> and uh, we have a, little, a brief talk by him to begin our teach-in this afternoon. This is John Hanger, who's the uh, Secretary of Policy and Planning for the state of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and state's economy, and also talk about the provision of training, counseling, and other means of helping former inmates overcome the effects of mass incarceration. I will moreover provide examples of how the Wolf Administration is addressing these issues generally. As I'm sure you are aware, there has been a lot of talk about criminal justice reform. A bipartisan consensus has emerged around the critical need to improve our current system. One facet of the system that is sometimes overlooked is the reentry efforts of individuals released from custody. The Wolf Administration recognizes that services and employment, education, housing, mental health, and substance abuse treatment are critical to a returning offenders' chances at success. If we are really serious about building safe communities, if we are really committed to economic and social justice, we have to be willing to invest in stopping crime before it starts. We must work together to break the cycle of generational illiteracy and poverty. We have to be willing to invest in real prevention and prisoner reentry opportunities and do it in a systemic way. We all know that we cannot simply jail our way into safer communities. We must therefore invest in preventing crime the same way we've been focused on sending people to prison. Until then, our communities will not be as safe nor will our system be as fair as it should be. Take education, for example. Pennsylvania sees about 21,000 individuals enter the state correction system each year. Of the 50,000 or so inmates currently in the state system, 95% identifies as male, 48% as African American, 42% of males, and 34% of females have below a 12th grade education, and 81% claim to be unskilled. Think about it. Literacy is so critical. Indeed, reading failure is the common thread among many of our social ills, academic failure, delinquency, violence, and crime. When a person cannot read, many of the daily tasks we take for granted, like reading a job application, are much harder, if not entirely impossible. In 11 of our state correctional institutions, offenders have access to reentry specific workshops tailored to their individual needs. Workshops take place within specific housing units or within a reentry service office. They vary in topic, but include such topics as the basics of parole supervision, workforce readiness, practical budgeting, and so on. The Wolf Administration will increase reentry readiness by expanding the availability of these workshops. Further, at the governor's direction, the Department of Corrections has expressed interest in partnering with systems of higher education to offer Pell Grants to inmate students. You may have seen that the federal government recently allowed federal and state penitentiaries to become experimental sites, thereby opening up Pell Grant access to inmates. This will mark the first time since 1994 that federal funding will be provided to inmates seeking a post-secondary education. These and other efforts will ensure that more inmates get the education and training they need to be successful when they leave prison. Steady employment is important too. Obtaining steady, gainful employment is a critical reentry factor that weighs heavily on a returning citizen. By ostracizing former offenders, we increase the risk of recidivism and make our communities less safe. 
I believe that former offenders need stability, support, and social ties to turn away from their mistakes of the past. For that reason, the Wolf administration is, is examining the possibility of fair chance hiring, also referred to as banning the box for Commonwealth employees. The implementation of fair chance hiring policies will set a great example and hopefully pay the way for such policies to be adopted more broadly by the private sector. While some of the nation's largest employers, including the federal government, have demonstrated a willingness to look past an applicant's criminal history, we ultimately need more businesses to take an active role in the reentry process. The Wolf Administration has moreover directed the Department of Corrections to collaborate with other state agencies, as well as private sector and community partners, to ensure that offenders are on a pathway to long-term long employment. The department recently received a $1 million grant from the federal government to support career pathway activities. The governor has also invited the department to participate in planning sessions to ensure that the federally mandated Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act plan is a multi-agency cross-systems approach. What about mental health or drug and alcohol treatment then? Among the state corrections population, 24% is diagnosed with mental health treatment needs, and 65% is diagnosed with drug and alcohol treatment needs. This means that the Department of Corrections serves as the primary mental health service provider for over 12,000 people. Within the walls, offender programming helps support medical care, substance abuse treatment, and mental health treatment. The department has hired a dedicated mental health advocate to oversee improvements to its mental health services. The advocate will ensure that offenders are connected with benefits upon their release from prison. More specifically, she will participate in an interagency reentry committee to connect staff and partners on reentry planning, help facilitate mental health and drug and alcohol treatment in the community, and make sure inmates are identified early prior to release to initiate the reentry planning process. Further, the Wolf Administration has directed the department to provide medication assisted treatment, or MAT, to offenders in need suffering from heroin addiction. The department is therefore implementing and evaluating the use of Vivitrol for offenders with substance abuse issues. On the supervision side of things, meanwhile, the Board of Probation and Parole aims to best provide continuity of care. The board ensures that supervisory agents are appropriately trained and manage their caseloads to properly address offenders' particular needs. In closing, the administration is familiar with the issues important to you. Rather than creating even greater distance between former offenders and the communities they are rejoining, the administration is focused on developing more effective paths for reentry. Indeed, Governor Wolf and I am personally committed to implementing recidivism reduction strategies aimed at more fully integrating returning offenders. Providing meaningful support through these critical services is vital to our ongoing and collective efforts to reduce recidivism, promote public safety, and foster positive res results in communities across the Commonwealth. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for what you do. All right, we've heard from our governor, and we're going to make sure that we keep his feet to the fire about what John Hanger just said, because they made a lot of promises, and I think one of our jobs today is going to be to make sure that this community is the recipient of some of this largesse that they mentioned. Good afternoon, I'm Marietta Tanner, and I welcome all of you here to our second teach-in and with me is Nancy Anderson, and she and I will be the uh, co-host this morning, this afternoon. Uh, I'd first of all like to introduce all of you to our minister at this church who would like to welcome you, Reverend Kent Mathias. It is a deep honor to be together in this sanctuary. Uh, your presence, every single one of you, is a blessing 
to this gathering. And so, as uh, Marietta said, uh, on behalf of Reverend Daniel Gregoire, my colleague and I, we, we, the entire church is just proud to be in this partnership with such great people and organizations. We know that our nation has a soul sickness. We know something is terribly wrong. It does not make sense in any way you can think about it. One of the richest countries in the history of the world has the highest prison rate. We have 4.5% of the world population. We have 22% of the world's prison population. And within that, the racial discrepancies are tenacious. We know something is very wrong. It does not make any sense. It's like, I've been thinking lately, John Dye, it's kind of like the Cuban, the embargo of Cuba. It's like 50 years of a policy to change the government of Cuba doesn't work. And certain people say, just keep doing it stronger. It's like, it's not working. And we know whatever the goals are, well, I guess it depends on what somebody's goals are, but for justice and equality and fairness and helping people get a second chance when once in a while we make mistakes as human beings, this is not working. And we, we know that the governor knows, President Obama knows, some significantly growing number of Republican Congress people, and even I think a few Republican candidates for presidency know that it has to be changed. We're here to say the churches will not stop until this is fixed. The synagogues will not stop until this is fixed. The mosques will not stop until this is fixed. So sadly, I have a feeling it's going to be a long time because it's such a long way, but we can start getting it better and better. I'm committed to work on this for the rest of my life if it takes that, which I somewhat worry it will. And I want us all to commit. This is a great day. Let's do great things, but we will stick with this nonstop, week in, month out, year in and out as people of love and hope. And I hope today gives us inspiration and, and gas in the tank for this long-term project, doing it together in beloved community. Welcome.